Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Assalamu alaikum dear students. I am Asma Kamran. I hope everyone is fine and are watching these lectures. We are continuing the chapter prokaryotes. Today we will learn about growth in bacteria, asexual reproduction in bacteria, sexual reproduction in bacteria, ecological importance of bacteria that is the role of bacteria in decomposition, humus formation and bioremediation. Economic importance of bacteria, that is the role of bacteria in research and technology. Now the bacterial growth and reproduction. Microorganisms, when they are provided with nutrients and other environmental factors, they become metabolically active and grow. Bacterial growth takes place on two levels. A cell builds up protoplasm and number of cells in the population increases. Bacterial growth occurs in four major phases, which can be represented by bacterial growth curve, which is shown over here. And these four phases are lag phase, exponential or log phase, stationary phase, and death phase. Lag phase is the time when the cell increase in size, but there is no multiplication. This is the time when cell adapt itself to the environment and it is a period of rapid metabolic activity but the cell do not divide enzymes and intermediates are produced and they accumulate and prepare the cell for division second is log or exponential phase in which the number of cells increases exponentially with respect to time, that is the number of cells double with each doubling time. The average time required for the population or the biomass to double is known as generation time or doubling time. In this phase, the cells multiply at a maximum rate and there is a linear relationship between the number of bacteria and time. This keep on going until the nutrients are depleted in the environment oxygen is depleted in the environment and toxic substances produced by the bacterial cells start accumulating in the environment then comes the stationary phase which is the third phase due to the depletion of nutrients and accumulation of toxic substances bacteria they start dying this is the phase during which the rate of increase in the number of bacterial cells equals the number of bacterial deaths. So there is no increase in the number of bacterial cells. Fourth one is a death or decline phase. In this phase there is a death in the bacterial cell and the rate of cell division gradually decreased and eventually the cells stop multiplying but some of the bacteria sur survive this phase by forming spores or cyst this is another figure that shows the growth curve you see in the lag phase there is no increase in the number of bacterial cells then in the exponential or log phase the number doubles with time then comes the stationary phase where some of the cells start dying and some of the cells are multiplying. So the rate of increase in the number of bacterial cells is equal to the rate of bacterial death. Then in the death phase, most of the bacteria die. Only some survive by spore formation and cyst formation. Bacteria is defined as an increase in the number of bacterial cells within a population. Growth trends within a bacterial population can be illustrated using a bacterial growth curve, such as this one. Growth occurs in four phases, lag, log, stationary, and death. Let's look at each phase of the curve to see what's happening. When dormant bacteria are transferred to a fresh medium with plenty of nutrients, they spend some time switching their metabolic machinery from the dormant state to an actively growing state. During the lag phase, the number of new bacterial cells is equivalent to the number of dying cells, resulting in a horizontal plot on the growth curve. The lag phase can last from less than an hour to days, depending on the species of bacteria. 
During the log phase, or exponential growth phase, the bacteria are actively undergoing binary fission. During the log phase, the bacteria double their numbers every generation period. The generation period can range from 20 minutes to days, depending on the species. As long as there are plenty of nutrients and little waste buildup, the bacteria will continue to grow exponentially. It's convenient to represent the growth of the bacteria on a logarithmic graph because the numbers of bacteria increase very rapidly with each subsequent generation. When the log of the number of cells is plotted versus the generation, the graph is linear. After the bacteria have grown for a while and they're starting to deplete the nutrients in the growth medium, some of the cells begin to die. The stationary phase is reached when the number of new cells equals the number of cells that are dying. After the bacteria have depleted most of their nutrients and their waste buildup is getting too great, the bacteria begin to die in larger numbers than are made. If the death phase is carried on for a long time, most of the cells will die. If a cell is to survive, it must switch its metabolism back to a dormant state because there are not enough nutrients available for any more growth. Now the reproduction in bacteria. Bacteria mostly reproduce by asexual method. True sexual reproduction is absent, but there are various methods of genetic recombination in bacteria. So that various methods of genetic recombination are called sexual reproduction. And asexual reproduction, which is the common method of reproduction, is of two types, binary fission and budding. Now the first one is binary fission. Binary fission is the type of asexual reproduction in which identical copies of the bacterial cells are produced. And it is the most common form of reproduction in bacteria. In binary reproduction, the DNA replicates and the two copies of DNA get attached to the cell membrane and the bacterial cell elongates or enlarges in size and the septum is formed in the center. This septum gradually deepens and divides the parent cell into two daughter cells. The daughter cells soon grow, become mature within 20 minutes and divide again. So this process keep on going and increase the number of bacterial cells. This is another figure that shows binary fission. You see the DNA replicates get attached to the cell membrane and the cell enlarges and septum is formed. The septum gradually deepens and divides the cell into two daughter cells. Most bacteria reproduce by a process called binary fission. During binary fission, the parental cell divides to form two daughter cells. In the first step of binary fission, the bacterium replicates or copies its chromosome and attaches each identical copy to a separate location on the cell membrane. Unlike eukaryotic cells, bacteria do not need to dissolve a nuclear membrane or assemble a mitotic spindle, making binary fission very quick and efficient. Second, the cell elongates. Since the chromosomes are attached to different locations on the cell membrane, they separate from one another. Third, the bacterium pinches off at the center and forms a septum, a separating wall between the two compartments of the cell. Finally, the cell splits into two new daughter cells. These daughter cells are fully mature bacteria that can grow and, if conditions are right, continue the binary fission process. Now the second method of phase sexual reproduction is budding. In this process, the parent cell give off an outgrowth or a bud at one end of the cell. The genetic material or the chromosome or DNA, it replicates and one member of the DNA moves to that outgrowth. This outgrowth gradually increases in size and gets separate from the parental cell. So a bud is formed. This bud may remain attached to the parental cell or get separate. If it remain attached to the parental cell, may divide by another bud. So chains of cells are formed in this process of asexual reproduction. Now the sexual reproduction. 
in bacteria there is no true sexual reproduction as there is no meiosis gamete formation and the zygote formation but bacterial cells they transfer their genetic material and this transfer of genetic material is called genetic recombination or parasexuality the cell which gives its dna is called donor cell and the cell which receives it is called recipient cell sexual parasexuality or genetic recombination occurs in three ways in bacteria number 1 conjugation number 2 transduction number 3 transformation now the first one is conjugation during conjugation two bacterial cells that belong to the same species or to the closely related species come together and are connected to each other by sex pili through this pili a cytoplasmic bridge is formed and usually the donor cell is the cell with the plasmid so that one strand of the plasmid it gets separate and moves through that cytoplasmic bridge to the recipient cell recipient cell after receiving that half of dna it replicates in both donor and recipient cells so makes a plasmid in both the donor and recipient cell so both both donor and recipient cells they exchange their genetic material so this is a type of sexual reproduction bacterial conjugation is a process of genetic transfer between bacterial cells that requires direct contact between the cells many but not all species of bacteria can conjugate conjugation can occur between cells of the same species or even between cells of two different species a small dna circle or plasmid called the f factor is required for conjugation the f factor stands for fertility factor strains of bacteria containing the f factor are called f plus those without it are called f minus an f plus cell or donor produces a structure called a pilus to connect with another recipient cell to begin conjugation the f factor is cut at a specific region called the origin of transfer by a protein assembly called the relaxosome which associates with the strand to be transferred or the t dna strand accessory proteins of the relaxosome are released but a portion of the relaxosome called the relaxase remains attached to the t dna this t dna relaxase complex is recognized by a coupling factor and transferred to the exporter a complex in the f plus cell that is contiguous with the pilus the exporter pumps the t dna relaxase complex into the recipient cell once the entire t dna molecule is transferred to the recipient cell relaxase joins the ends to make a circular dna molecule as the t dna is transferred to the recipient cell it is replicated to become double stranded in the donor cell the f factor dna was also replicated to become double stranded this actually occurred as the t dna was being transferred to the recipient cell in the end both cells wind up with a complete double stranded copy of the f factor their connection through the pilus is released and each is now an f plus cell that can go on to conjugate with other cells the second method of genetic recombination or sexual reproduction in bacterial cell is transduction transduction is the transfer of genetic material from one bacterium to another bacterium through a third party that is usually a bacteriophage is called transduction it occurs when a bacteriophage get attached to the bacterial cell and introduces its nuclear material inside the bacterial cell and then viral dna it takes hold of the bacterial cell and bacterial chromosome is broken down and viral dna replicates synthesizes its protein and then assembly of the viral particles takes place in the cell during this replication 
some of the viruses may get bacterial DNA or the fragments of bacterial DNA so that when the viral particles are produced some of the, of the viral particles may have a bacterial DNA so in this way and when this viruses which have bacterial DNA they infect new bacterial cell and introduces their DNA into the cell this bacterial DNA may incorporate with the DNA of the this new bacterial cell and in this way a genetic recombination occurs which is called transduction generalized transduction a segment of DNA is carried from one bacterial cell to another by a bacterial virus called a bacteriophage or phage the phage attaches to the bacterial cell and injects its nucleic acid into the host cell a phage enzyme is produced that breaks down the host DNA into smaller fragments phage DNA is replicated and phage coat proteins are produced during formation of the mature phage particles, a few phage heads may surround fragments of bacterial DNA instead of phage DNA. The phage particle carrying the bacterial DNA infects another cell, transferring the bacterial DNA to the new cell. When the bacterial DNA is introduced into the new host cell, it can become integrated into the bacterial chromosome, thereby transferring genes to the recipient. This cell then multiplies and carries new genetic material. Now the third method of sexual reproduction in bacteria is transformation. When bacterial cells die or when bacterial cells are reproducing very rapidly, they release their DNA into the environment and some such DNA fragments they may be taken up by other bacterial cells by diffusion. This process of absorption of DNA into a cell from the environment is called transformation. As you can see in the figure, this bacterial cell die and its DNA is released in the environment. This DNA is taken up by another bacterial cell and inside the bacterial cell it integrates or becomes the part of this new bacterial cell. So when this bacterial cell replicate, each and every daughter cell have a copy of that donor cell. Some bacteria possess surface proteins that can transport DNA from closely related cells, allowing a process called transformation. When a bacterial cell dies, it can break open and release DNA which can be taken in by closely related species and incorporated into their genomes. Now the genetic variability of bacteria. Bacteria as asexual organisms mostly reproduce by asexual method inherit in identical copies of DNA or chromosome from their parents so they are called clones. However, some bacteria evolve by selection due to changes in their genetic material and this change is by different methods of genetic recombination or mutation. So genetic changes which occur in bacterial DNA or chromosome may be due to random mutation and this is due to different factors when bacterial cell is replicating or dividing. Now the importance of bacteria. Bacteria are very important members of biodiversity and they are important both ecologically and economically. Now the ecological importance of bacteria Ecological importance refers to the role of bacteria in the environment, such as as a decomposer. They decompose dead bodies of the living organisms and convert complex organic matter into simple 
substances or molecules which can be recycled or reused by the living organisms. And they are also important in the humus formation to increase the fertility of soil and they are also important in bioremediation that is the removal or degradation of environmental pollutants with the help of bacteria. Now the role of bacteria in decomposition they all serve as recyclers of nature. Recycler means due to decomposition of the dead bodies of living organisms they decompose these dead bodies and convert complex organic matter into simpler ones so these organic matters are released back into into the environment and are reused by the living organisms so the organic car carbon present in the dead bodies it might diminish all the carbon dioxide from the environment but as bacteria they release the carbon back into the environment so there is no depletion and the cycle keeps on going if there would have been no photosynthesis no food but the bacteria use dead matter as a source of their nutrient and in turn recycle the organic compounds which are retrapped in the dead matter and release them in the environment again as the bacteria they decompose dead organic matter so in doing so they increase the soil fertility by humus formation and by nitrogen fixation the partially partly decaying organic matter of dead organisms is called humus it contains nutrients and it increases soil fertility Bacteria and fungi are the only organisms that can decompose dead animals and plants and these are the part of humus formation. Nitrogen is the most important element for plants as nitrogen is used for the protein formation and is required for growth and metabolic activities. Soil is the only source of nitrogen for plants as they cannot inhale atmospheric nitrogen and plants and animals are dependent on plants for their nitrogen so nitrogen is available to the plants through a process that is called nitrogen fixation there are some nitrogen fixing bacteria like rhizobium and cyanobacteria live in the root nodules of leguminous plants this association is called mutualism and these bacteria they get carbon from the plant and re in return fix atmospheric nitrogen for the plant so this atmospheric nitrogen is then converted into ammonia then into nitrites and nitrates as a part of the metabolism of the bacteria and then this nitrates are used by the plants and plants then build up their proteins from these nitrates and the nitrogen in the plant is then used up by animals when animals eat plants this is a figure that shows the relationship between the bacteria and the plant you see this is a legume or a leguminous plant that is a pea plant and in the root there are nodules these are called root nodules these nodules contain nitrogen fixing bacteria these bacteria fix nitrogen atmospheric nitrogen for the plant convert it into nitrite and nitrate which is then used up by the plants and in turn they get food from the plant so this is a mutual relationship between the bacteria and the plant and this nitrogen fixation is a part of nitrogen cycle Now the role of bacteria in removal or degradation of environmental pollu pollu pollution which is also called bioremediation. Removal or degradation of environmental pollutants with the help of living organisms is called bioremediation. 
bacteria naturally love to eat pollutants or have been genetically altered or genetically changed to remove toxin from the environment. Scientists, they are designing microbes or microorganisms to remove contaminants like oil, radioactive waste, gasoline or gas and mercury. Bioremediation is a method of using living things to remove pollution made by humans. One method of bioremediation is in situ. The other method is ex situ and it is done in factories. These are four types of contaminations that occur in water. First example of water contamination is agricultural contamination. It causes a problem when an excess of chemicals accumulates in soil and spreads around. Secondly, municipal contamination can be resolved by bioremediation. Main contamination type is E. coli. Thirdly, industrial contamination, which is a big environmental problem. This results from chemical dumping in oceans and from smoke production. Plants and animals are affected by the toxins. The last example is oil spill contaminations. As a result of leaking of oil, the oil spreads across the ocean. This mostly affects marine life and poisons it. How does it work? This is the general term for the bioremediation process. Addition of microorganisms with the contaminants creates carbon dioxide. Many physical and chemical conditions are required for the microbes to work well and with efficiency. These are some examples to the benefits of bioremediation. It reduces the amount of equipment, labor, and energy used to clean up contaminants. It poses no threats to the people at the cleanup site. It is the recommended method for removing oil stains. Now this is the figure that shows the removal of industrial waste from the water. This is another figure that shows the removal or by degradation of pollutants due to oil. Now the economic importance of bacteria. Economic importance refers, refers to the role of bacteria in research and technology, in plant diseases and animal diseases caused by bacteria. Now the role of bacteria in research and technology. Bacteria play an important role in technology, mainly in biological research, mining, medicine or the production of medicine, production of food products, plastic synthesis or biodegradable plastic, sewage treatment. Now the first is biological research. Bacteria have been used and being continuously used in the study of genetics and in genetic engineering. Bacteria were used as model organisms in many different experiments in the past such as discovery of DNA as a hereditary material and the discovery of semi-conservative replication of DNA etc. And many components of bacterial cell are also being used as tools in genetic engineering experiments. Now the mining. The miners can extract metal from low-grade ores. Low-grade ores means where the metals are present in low amount or in less amount in very ecologically friendly way by using the bacteria. This is mostly done in the case of copper. Thiobacillus ferrooxidans. It catalyzes the oxidation of copper sulfate so that they are soluble in water and then this allows the copper to be leached out of the rocks or from the mine. Thiobacillus ferrooxidans along with Thiobacillus thiooxidan and Leptospirillum ferrooxidans it is used in the extraction of gold and uranium. 
this is the figure that shows the oxidation of copper and then leaching of copper the figure is not very much clear it is slightly blur but you can understand from this figure that bacteria oxidizes the copper and copper becomes soluble in water and then it's leached out of the mine and then it is collected Now the production of medicines and food with the help of bacteria. Bacteria are used for the production of antibiotics, vitamins, amino acids and enzymes. And dairy products are also produced with the fermentation of bacteria that is yogurt, cheese, butter etc. As you can see in this figure, the antibiotics and some other medicines including vitamins are produced by the bacteria and many food products are produced by fermentation process of bacteria now the biodegradable plastic it is made by two bacterially plastic molecules or two molecules which are produced by the bacteria poly b hydroxy butyrate and poly b hydroxy valerate these molecules are polymers just like ordinary plastic but they are different from the ordinary plastic or ordinary polymer that when they are left out in the composite or outside they can be broken down by bacteria and fungi or by the decomposers so that the molecules are degraded and then released in the environment. And due to the characteristic or uh, de degrading ability of the bacteria that they can degrade harmful chemicals and pol pollutants, bacteria are naturally used in the purification or in the treatment of waste water and this is a picture that shows the treatment or waste water treatment plant economic importance of bacteria bacteria play a very important role in medicine agriculture and several industries in medicine antibiotics Antibiotics such as streptomycin, oreomycin, chloromycetin, etc. are obtained from bacteria. Vaccines Bacteria are used in the preparation of serum and vaccines. In agriculture, decay of organic substances. Bacteria act on dead bodies of plants and animals and convert complex organic compounds into simple inorganic substances nitrification the proteins present in the dead bodies of plants and animals is converted into ammonia by ammonifying bacteria this process is known as ammonification ammonia is converted into nitrites by bacteria of the nitromonas group 
the nitrites are finally converted into nitrates by bacteria of the nitrobacter group. This type of conversion of ammonia into nitrates is called nitrification. Nitrates thus formed increases soil fertility. Nitrogen fixation. Some of the soil bacteria like azotobacter and clostridium found in the root nodules of leguminous plants are capable of fixing atmospheric nitrogen into nitrates. These nitrates are used by green plants to produce proteins. In industry, lactobacillus bacteria help in the formation of milk products such as curd and cheese. Bacteria such as Mycoderma aceti help to produce vinegar or acetic acid. Some bacteria help in the retting of flex and jute fibers which are then converted into ropes. Some bacteria help in the curing and ripening of tea leaves which gives tea its characteristic aroma and flavor. Some bacteria are used in the tanning of leather. Other uses the bacteria Escherichia coli found in the human intestine synthesizes vitamin B complex which helps in the digestion and absorption of food. Bacteria living in the intestine of herbivorous animals like cows, buffaloes etc. produce enzymes which act upon cellulose and helps in its digestion. So that is all about for today's lecture. Thank you very much.